In this episode, I'm here with Felicia Romero. She has thousands of followers on social media and has really mastered her personal brand. Felicia's a pro at Facebook Live, making social videos and getting several TV segments every single month. She's a fitness personality, model, and entrepreneur who's been featured on NBC, CBS, Fox, AZ Family, and tons more. And today, we're gonna talk about how your business can get featured on TV and in magazines regularly with Felicia's unique PR strategies and tips. Growing a small business isn't easy, and to be successful, we know three things for sure. You have to work hard, you have to be bold, and you must constantly learn. We're gathering some of the best minds in the business world to share their ideas and strategies with you so you can grow your business easier, be more profitable, and have a lot more fun being a business owner. We're on a mission to connect the world of wellness, and this is the Mind Body Bold Show. What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Garcia. Welcome back to another episode of The Bold Show. And today, I'm here with Felicia Romero. Hi, guys. Man, I am excited to have you on because you, you know how to get on TV. You know how to use the media better than anyone. Now, we've had somebody on the show before that does it for others, mm -hmm. but you do it for yourself. Yes. And you do it well. I like to think so. So right now, you are an online coach for people that want to get in better shape, boost your metabolism and all mm -hmm. that. But you, but prior to this, not too long ago, you actually had a pretty successful fitness studio yes. that now is sold under other management and you are uh, basically doing your own thing online, help people all over the world. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I just wanted more impact, more freedom. Right. Yeah. And, and so I totally get that. Mm -hmm. And because of your ability to build up your media, that opportunity seemed rather easy. So what I want to do is I want to talk about how people that are watching and listening right now that own yoga studios or fitness studios or salons or massage, whatever, I want them to learn from you how they can follow in your footsteps and be able to go from somebody that feels like they're relatively unknown mm -hmm. to the community to somebody that, man, I just can't stop getting on TV. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So how often do you get on TV? I would say three to four times a month. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you get on TV three to four times a month, um, is it the same network? Like, are you just using the same person, like NBC over and over and over, ABC over and over and over? I'm actually able to be successful on all of the networks. Okay. Yeah. So give me an example. Like, what are, what are networks you're able to get on? So just to give you an example, a couple weeks ago, you know, on a Monday, I was on Fox News. On a Tuesday, I was at CBS. And on Thursday, I was at NBC. Okay, so now before we dive into this, can people that are watching do what you're doing or is this for only the select few? No, absolutely anybody can do this if they know what to do and how to do it. And that's what we're going to talk about? That's what we're going to talk about. All right, here we go. So I want you to imagine that you are just starting over again, mm -hmm. like you haven't had an opportunity yet. Okay. Okay? What's the first thing that you do in order to even learn where the opportunities are and where you should start. Like walk me through the journey. I want you to coach me on this. All right. Well, that's where social media comes in. Um, you stalk. You okay. stalk all of the news anchors on each different network and you pitch. So what's going on? What's current in that field? Um, for me, obviously fitness. So is it national, you know, sugar awareness month or something like that? So I basically go and I look at each network. I contact all of the top anchors in that network um, through Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, create some sort of relationship with them, reach out to them, and I start pitching ideas. Um, now wait, do you reach out to the network on Twitter or do you reach out to specific people in the network on Twitter? That's a really good question. I actually reach out to specific people. Um, you're going to get more of a response that way. Okay. Um, so how do you know who to reach out to? Well, first you follow the network. Then you okay. look at all of the anchors that are in that network, whether it's morning news, afternoon, nightly news. Uh, you're going to be a little bit more successful with the morning news, just to be honest. Okay. Um, they're a little bit more open and apt to you know, want to bring new people on. Um, and then once you create those relationships and you start networking and you have great ideas and you're great on camera, you are going to be asked back and that's where you create those relationships. So now when you find them, let's say on Twitter, mm -hmm. okay, so obviously we have to have a Twitter. Right. Period. Okay. Yeah. Social media, you got to be active on that. Okay. So we get a Twitter. Is there a way you should set up your bio 
in order to make sure that when they see you, they wonder that they know exactly who you are and what you do? Absolutely. So if for me, health and fitness, everything health and fitness, like I am the expert in health and fitness and you want to appear that way. The things that you post, the things that you promote, um, the sort of branding that you're putting out there wants to reflect basically what you're trying to promote. So if you are in that health and fitness space or Pilates space or yoga space, you want to be that go-to in that in that space. Now, for some of you right now, because we're going to go more into the strategy to take us all the way through, some of you that may be thinking, man, that sounds like a lot of work. Remember, you get this stuff for free. You're not paying for this no, exposure, absolutely. right? No. And your stuff's being seen by thousands of people mm -hmm. within your community right. regularly because you know how to do it, right? right? Absolutely. So, it's worth the squeeze here. Yeah. Let's get it done. Okay, so totally worth the squeeze. so now we got our bio set up, and, and you know, obviously, it's got a really great picture of us. And you can check out Felicia Romero's bio if you want kind of inspiration. Mm -hmm. What's your Twitter handle? Felicia Romero. Okay, yeah, so, so that's easy. <laughs> so at Felicia Romero. So look at her bio, and you'll see what she did as far as like what type of picture she put up and cover photo, and then like the kind of stuff that she put in her bio, and then also the kind of stuff that you regularly post. Mm -hmm. But Okay, so now you find, let's say, the, the guy that typically interviews people like you, mm -hmm. right? Which, would you call them journalists or? I would say the anchors. They're anchors? The TV okay. Anchors, yeah. So what's the name of one of them? It was like Javier or something? Javier Soto. He's Javier. a great okay. one. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say <clears throat> you find Javier on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And you go, okay, here we go. I'm going to... I'm gonna say something to this guy. Mm -hmm. Do you just tweet him where you get like 100 mm -hmm. some characters? Mm -hmm. Do you direct message him? How do you reach out? Well, first you have to create the relationship and create the, the awareness. So okay. I don't necessarily send just a message like, hey, you know, bring me on your show. Um, I maybe comment on some of his posts, um, give suggestions or retweet his posts. Give me an example and of a suggestion. So, for example, if he tweets something that he saw that day, you know, I'll respond back like, hey, that's really cool, or create some sort of relationship to where he recognizes and sees my name versus just sending a really kind of obscure message to him. So, so you know, that, like, hey, that's really cool. That sounds like we could just copy paste that to everyone's tweet. So do you get specific in it? Yeah, you definitely could. Maybe, um, I, I can't really give an example. So maybe, you know, he talked about Let's that Let's say morning. Six, six habits to, to, you know, implement into your morning routine. Yeah, and so maybe I would comment on that and say, hey, I really like number three. I do that as well. Um, maybe I want to get him to respond back, so I might ask a question, um, something like that. But you definitely want to create that interaction, and that's how the relationship is built. So maybe like, hey, these six tips were great. Mm -hmm. um, will you be doing other segments like this? Yeah, something absolutely. Like and okay. then, you know, maybe do that for a couple weeks before you send that message out and saying, hey, I have this really cool idea. How about you, you know, you bring me on the show and we talk about it. So planting the seeds, planting the planting seeds, the seeds mm -hmm. getting them to know you, mm -hmm. then eventually like you because you're commenting on mm -hmm. his stuff, which by the way, people really like, right? Yeah. yeah. So you're commenting on his stuff and now because of familiarity is there, there's a little bit more trust. Absolutely. Familiarity creates trust mm -hmm. and trust creates comfort. So mm -hmm. uh, at this point, we wanted to be comfortable with you right. and getting on a phone call or something right. like that, right. right? Absolutely. Okay. So now... We've gotten that trust. We've gotten that comfort. I, I built a little bit of relationship by commenting and retweeting and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So now it's a couple weeks. I've done maybe four or five of those. Right. That, that good? Yeah. Okay. Now, when do I pitch? How does it, what's the next step? So the next step is to research what it is that's going on in current events. People love current events. They want to be talking about what's going on in the now. So, you know, kind of look up local news, look up current events, anything fitness trendy, relatable. Well, you've been and on like four or five times the last couple weeks, right? Yeah, so yeah. what were like the segments? What so were some of the segments? for example, um, a couple weeks ago, I pitched um, best exercises for people who stand all day at work and the best exercises for people who sit all day at work. And I hit every single network and I was probably on every network that week really? talking Just about that. Just for that one? Just for that one pitch. Wow. Yeah. And so it was relatable. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that sit all day and there's people out there that sit, that, uh, that stand all day as well and, and need to know what those exercises are and what the best things to do. So did the pitch and they bit. Um, and I must say, I get a lot of no's. Um, so you got to keep trying. And, and less no's now that you've built relationships yeah. with people and they yeah. know you and met you yeah. um, and deliver value. But in the very beginning, the no's were a lot oh, heavier. Oh, absolutely. And that's why, you know, if you're getting discouraged, please just keep trying because chances are there's going to be one that bites. And and that's the, that's the end, and that's the continuing, you know, building that relationship. Okay, so we know the topic. Mm -hmm. Let's say it's uh, five exercises that you should do if you mm -hmm. stand all day at work or sit all day or whatever the mm -hmm. title, right? Something like that. Right. Now, do you direct message him on Twitter, or do you 
tweet him like an actual tweet or, or how yeah so I would send a direct message and I would maybe ask for an email a lot of these anchors actually have their email say hey for story ideas or segment ideas you know here's my email a lot of them okay. have their email and I take that email and I'll, I'll make it a little bit more personal I'll actually email them the now idea. let's say you don't know the person obviously people like Javier you know him mm -hmm. so right. the email pitch is gonna be a little different right but let's say you don't know the person and you're pitching that stand sit exercise mm -hmm. idea What's an example of a subject line you'll use in order to really get their attention? And then what's an example of like what the body would say? Oh gosh, I, I would definitely would say, hey, I have an awesome idea for you right now. There's something current, you know, that all of your viewers need to be know, you know, learning or knowing or something like that. But I definitely want to get their attention with, hey, I got something really important to show you or talk about. Okay. And now, do you give them any type of insight on what that is in Absolutely. the body? So yeah. bullet point or what? Bullet point, you don't want to waste their time um, and you don't want to kind of roll, you know, kind of like beat around the bush. So I get to straight to the point on what I am trying to bring to him. Okay. Now, let's say they say, okay, yes, we want to have you on. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you prepare for that segment? Because those segments are like, what, three, four minutes long? Yeah. Like you don't get a ton of time. No. I mean, that is a ton of time when you think of a TV commercial, 30 right. seconds, right? But it's only three to four minutes. Mm -hmm. So how do you prepare to make sure that you say everything you want and need to say in four minutes? Yeah, and that's the tough one. That's where you have to kind of practice in front. If you're not familiar with being on camera, that's where you kind of have to practice because most of these segments are live and they fly. as well. It goes so fast. The nice thing about working with an anchor, they are gonna ask you questions and they're gonna move things along rather quickly, um, but you want to remember the key points that you're trying to point across. So okay. those bullet points that you sent Javier earlier on, that's what you're gonna actually talk about in the segment. But again, the anchors are so good about guiding you that it, it goes pretty smoothly. It's literally like you're having a conversation with a bunch of camera crews around you, so. Now, let's say, again, you're starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. You don't know Javier. Maybe you don't have 50 some thousand followers on Twitter or Instagram. I think you have 80,000 followers on Twitter now, like 50,000 on Instagram. Let's say you don't have all that. Right. You have maybe a few hundred followers in those platforms. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's necessary to mention who you are in the email or do you skip it? I mean, what's like the best method to make sure that they have credibility in you? Yeah, you absolutely want to mention your name, um, maybe the things that you've done or... If you, you own know, a yoga studio. Yeah, if you own a studio, um, if you've done anything credible, written articles, things like that. You know, they, they are obviously more apt to do those sorts of things if you if you have that sort of credibility. but. It's not impossible if you don't have the following and you don't have, you gotta get your foot in the door somewhere. So it's the pitch, it's making sure you're current, making sure you have something valuable because they want value and the way that you word it and how you come across, you right. know? So, and don't give up, be persistent. Okay, so now I've prepared, mm -hmm. I've practiced at home, mm -hmm. I found a way to answer, because do you know the questions ahead of time? Do they send those to you? Or no, anything? it's oh, pretty, no. It's, you kind of know obviously what you're talking about, right. but you honestly do not know the questions that they're gonna be asking. They okay. might go through it a little bit right before you go on live, but it's pretty, it's pretty off the cuff. Okay, but but at least you know what you're yeah, going to be talking about. You, you know what the yeah. topic is. Mm -hmm. So you go into that, you practice it, you're like, I think I can get this all down in three minutes now. Worst case, I got an extra minute for mm -hmm. questions. So you got that down. Now, do you, I, remember, I think I remember you telling me you come to the table typically with other topic ideas because yeah. now instead of on Twitter, I got Javier face to face. Right. We're standing right next to each other. So now you pitch him other ideas, mm -hmm. right? Um, so how many ideas do you typically come with and are they pretty close to what you're pitching right now or do you find different things? I'll find different things. So I'll come, uh, this is a perfect example, I had um, CBS, uh, I, I did a new segment with them and after the segment was done I pitched her, the anchor that was there, her name was Heidi, um, five more ideas and she loved them and we were already scheduling our next couple of segments next couple of segments yeah I I got her locked down in, in three or four segments that all aired at different times so we pre-shot them and pre-recorded them and I was on for a whole month pretty consistently on that network which was CBS at the time so yeah. so what's it done for you like what, what's the return when, when they go live does your phone ring at all do you get emails or do you go to like the store and people wreck it? Like what's all the, the return on something like that for you? 
Um, really all the above. It helps the following, really helps the credibility. Um, it gets your name out there, gets the gym out there, gets the studio, whatever you might be you know, promoting at that time. And it really helps build your following and credibility. Um, for me, it's it sort of kind of built the local name, the local fitness personality name um, as the go-to person. And it makes it a little bit more easier for you to get picked up on other networks, mm -hmm. for people wanting to go to you, wanting your advice or expertise because you're the go-to person, right. you know, and, and that's kind of cool to have. Um, and it just only helps your credibility in the long run and your branding. So one of the things that's, you know, not, not just for Felicia, but brands in general work really well is when you, when you have that familiarity. Mm -hmm. So like if you go to a conference, let's say we went to the Mind Body Bold conference, right? right? And you were there and you saw two booths right next to each other and they virtually offer the exact same service mm -hmm. but one of them you've seen before several times and this one you've never heard of mm -hmm. ever uh which one do you feel more comfortable going up to i would probably be more comfortable the one that i've seen before right mm -hmm. and now if this person is telling you he can do this and help you this way and this person is telling you, you can help you and do this and do this way which one do you feel more trust in probably the one that had the most most exposure. Right, yeah. like the one that you've seen. That familiarity mm -hmm. creates trust. You mm -hmm. guys probably feel that too. Mm -hmm. And so when people come into your studio, mm -hmm. they say, I've seen you on TV. Is that conversation a lot different than if they never heard of you? Absolutely. In 100%. what way? Um, it's like there's already that relationship built almost. You know, like they already feel like they know me. Um, they're already there. They already trust what I'm saying. I don't have to prove anything to them. I don't have to prove that my system's a better system or that my way of burning fat is better because they're already they're already trusting they're me. They're ready to go. They're already ready to go. And some of your a lot of your segments are shot in your actual fitness studio. And you yeah. Have that, right. Mm -hmm. And so when they get in there, are people are ever like, oh, I've seen this play. Are people yeah. ever do that? Oh yeah, absolutely. And mm -hmm. that kind of creates a warmth for them mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So this is a video is amazing guys in general, right? But when you're able to get that video in front of a ton of people in a trustworthy place like TV, mm -hmm. right? Um, it really, really helps develop that trust. Mm -hmm. And as you guys know, I mean, if you're selling, which if you're a business owner, you're selling all the time, right? right. Even if you have salespeople, you're selling your salespeople on selling, but you know that the sale is so much easier when the person already knows you, what mm -hmm. you do, and can trust you. And the trust is there, yep. Yep. Okay, so uh, final questions, because mm -hmm. I want to know, you've, you've been running businesses now for a while, you've been doing really well, you've, you've grown, a lot of people know who you are. Tell me about some routines that you do as an entrepreneur that you know I, I need to do regularly, whether it's reading or whether it's mm -hmm. um, you know going to events, conferences, whether it's podcasts, whatever it is. What, what are things that you always do to make sure you're becoming a better entrepreneur? Right. I think you know healthy habits are so important um, for anyone out there because it's easy to get off routine. As we were talking about earlier, it's easy to get off a workout routine or anything that you might be doing. And for me, being an entrepreneur is so much about the routines and habits that you create um, because really the way you spend your time is, you know, it, it really predicts how productive you're going to be, mm -hmm. you know? So for me, I always make sure that I'm learning. I'm learning what's ever new on Instagram, webinars, podcasts. I'm reading, I'm watching your podcasts and things like that. And it's super important because if you're not learning, you're not growing and you know, you can never, there's always room to grow. So for me, it's, it's definitely creating that sort of space for myself to always try to be better and learn more and learn from others and the people that I surround myself with. So I think it's really, really important. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, well, Felicia, you shared a lot of really great tips today, and it didn't come from someone that thinks it works. It comes from someone that is always doing it. Mm -hmm. You've been doing it for years now. Like you just said, you were on TV four times in the last two weeks, mm -hmm. and uh, that's just incredible. So thank you so much for sharing yeah, thanks, with guys. the Mind Body Bold crowd. And for everyone that was watching and listening, thanks, and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you like this episode, then subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher, and to our YouTube channel to never miss an episode. You can get all the links by going to boldshow.com. Thanks, and see you next time.